Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely Saturday night. So, I actually have been starting to enjoy getting these random emails from people at lewis at fighttorepair.org where you tell me about your repair experiences with certain companies. A lot of them are eh, but some of them are really interesting. And I would like to start sharing these more often. Yesterday we shared one from Tesla, and today I'd like to share one from a company called Vanner. So, Vanner makes inverters, usually used in automobiles. So, an inverter is something that allows you to take the DC power from a 12-volt battery and up it to 110 volts of AC so that you could plug standard standard home appliances and stuff like that into it and have a typical electrical outlet in your RV or your ambulance. So this email is from Gabak Tech. He makes really good tutorial videos on YouTube, and I highly suggest you check them out. It says, Vanner is slash was top-notch on inverters, 12 volts to 110 volts, usually for ambulances or RVs, so any vehicle can have 110 volts in their vehicle. In my case, I used it to keep my laptop charged and for power tools. A few days ago, instead of 110 volts, I was getting 85. I contacted them and their answer is, toss it away and buy a new one. Usually they have inside boards that can be replaced like a PC. If the GPU of my PC is bad, I won't throw it away and buy a new one, but they don't care. Here's a few email exchanges, and when I asked for schematics, they told you no, as you can imagine. A basic inverter, Vanner, 700 watts, usually costs $800, versus a Chinese unbranded for $100. I don't mind paying extra for quality, but obviously, I was mistaken, and I thought we'd go over some of the email. So he emails them and says, I have 13 volt input, and output is 85 volts. It was working fine a few days ago. How can this be fixed? And he shows it on his multimeter. They say, and I quote, Hi, Gabriel, the unit will need to be replaced. This is coming from a technical support manager. Again, this is not coming from a social media manager. This is coming from a technical support manager manager. So he says, where do I have to send it to? What is the cost? Will you send me a new one back? And they reply, again, the technical and service support manager, the unit is not repairable. There is no need to send it to Vanner unless you believe that it's still in warranty. We can check that if you forward me the serial number. Please click on the where to buy link at your distributor for an area. He asks, how long do they last usually? Why is it not fixable? Surely there is a component that is bad that can be replaced. If you send me schematics, I can troubleshoot it. And that is the magic word. So he says that uh, this is a 10-year-old unit, so it's not under warranty. The VLT series is a discontinued product line. However, there are VLT 12600 units available for purchase. The new series of inverter is the TS series. If you want to replace it with a TS series, it would be the TS 12700. The technical information you requested cannot be released to the public. James says, you know, he says to James, why should I keep buying your products if you're not providing parts? Is it a mission of Vanner to pollute the planet or make the world a better place? I don't mind paying extra for quality, but if Vanner products are disposable, I would be better off getting an unknown brand that will cost five times le less, and if it dies in a few years, I can go and buy another one. This brand of laptops are making products with that mindset that they're fixable, right to repair mind. And I agree with him. Now, the one thing I find interesting here, again, this is not one of those, you know, Silicon Valley companies run by some virtue signaling hipster douchebag that pretends to care about sustainability and actually doesn't. This is a company in Hillard, Ohio. You know, Ohio is a really blue collar area. That's when, you know, where there was a lot of American manufacturing done back in the day. And that's where I would expect them to have this kind of mindset where if somebody spends top dollar for a particular product that they could have bought in AliExpress in China for $79, Give them the schematic. I mean, we're talking about something here that's been discontinued. It's a discontinued product. Like, you don't even sell this anymore. You don't even make this anymore. So it's not like you have to worry about somebody copying a design of something that you don't even make. And, you know, I, now I understand what many people are going to start thinking. They're going to start thinking of saying, well, they have to protect the customer from themselves. What if the customer hurts themselves opening it up? And uh, this is probably a line that you've heard at some point in your life if you have dated a single mother. And I quote, you're not my dad. But in all seriousness, they're, you're not the customer's dad. If the customer wants to open the product and work on that product and try to fix that product on their own to save it from being tossed out, it's, it's not on you if they, if they injure themselves. Now, again, if your manual says, in the schematic, says, oh, yeah, touch this thing without unplugging it, fine. But, I mean, most service manuals have these very, very long disclaimers and legal disclaimers on who should work on the product and where you, you know, how you could hurt yourself and this and that and the other that tend to be just fine to shield you in a court of law if a customer opens a discontinued product. And I, I just, and he really does ask a good question. Why should I pay seven times as much for your product if you are going to make it disposable like everybody else's? And, uh, you know, this is one of those things where, like, you hear people complain 
about why people don't want to buy things from American companies or stuff that's made in America. Yet, if you're, again, if you're going to get the same treatment that you would get on AliExpress, why should I care? You know, I've brought this up when it comes to certain uh, soldering stations where you can buy a soldering station that was made in America where it'll cost maybe 1000 or 1100 or $1,200. And not only is it less powerful than a Chinese station that costs 200 bucks, but often it has, has less features, less functionality, less power, less nozzles, less ability in general. And again, if American companies want to remain competitive, one of the things I think they're going to need to do, or at least companies that have offices in America, is at the very least start treating people better than how you're going to get treated when you go on AliExpress, you sort by lowest price, and you buy the cheapest shit. And hopefully this is a market where there's actually going to be some, somebody that comes along and realizes that there is money to be made there by having a real service and a real technical support manager that provides real service and technical support to people that call in. I would really hope that Vanner decides to change their mind here when it comes to releasing the schematic to a discontinued product that, again, they don't even make anymore. Because I, I just don't think this is a good look. Espe again, especially coming from a company that has an office in an area of the country that is, you, you know, again, known for having the type of people there that are going to open up their own stuff if something goes wrong with it. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think that it is unreasonable for a company that makes a product that costs seven times as much as the cheap Chinese knockoff to make a schematic available to a 10-year-old device so that you can fix it rather than throw it away? Do you think that the legal liability of somebody fixing their own inverter is the reason that they are not giving that out? Or do you think that that is just something that people say because it's, well, it just seems like the lowest hanging fruit reason for something that they don't have an explanation for. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.